Today on Animal Airport, a rescued puppy captures the hearts of staff at the Ark. How could anyone hurt something so precious, look at it? A feisty eagle proves more than even Stuart can handle. Ooh. And a young foal fights for life. If no one comes to it, it will die. No, 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 no. Heathrow, one of the world's busiest airports. Every year, 500,000 flights arrive and depart, carrying 70 million human passengers and 40 million animals and fish. And while humans report to passport control, the animals head to the animal reception centre, known as the Ark. The Ark plays host to animals arriving from all over the world, everything from dogs and cats to snakes and monkeys. And every staff member has their favourite. This morning, they're expecting a shipment that should make Supervisor Stewart's day. As you can see on the, on the board here, we've got quite a lot coming in. But a highlight for me would be the eagles we've got coming in from Tanzania. 42-year-old Stuart has been an animal lover his whole life and is a particular expert on birds. I've had my own birds of prey. I was quite into falconry, so I've flown most birds. And I'm probably more the experienced guy here when it comes to handling eagles and birds of prey. Today's arrivals are two different species of African eagles on their way to a falconry centre in Scotland. Four black eagles and four African hawk eagles. Stuart and the team have to check their microchips and rings to make sure their paperwork's in order before they can be sent on their way. First job, to check how the eagles have coped with the flight. These four are definitely long-term captives. You're quite steady, are you? There's not really much damage on the wings. For his beak's a little bit overgrown. That's not really an issue. When they get settled in to their new place, they'll, it'll probably trim a little bit of it. And then feed them the right diet, and that'll be worn down by you know, getting marrow out of the bone and things like that, which is you know, quite tasty for birds of prey. But these are lovely. I mean, their talons have to be this big to help them when they catch monkeys out of trees and things like that. So they'll you know, catch up vervets and then pull them straight off the trees. The team has to check the eagle's microchips. Stuart will be helped by vet Andrew. They have a long-handled chip reader, ideal for this type of situation. They're not going to come through there, so... But they're not having much luck. Oh, of course. I mean, is it going to be easier just to get them out? If it's going to stress them out by putting that in and then bouncing up and down. Yeah, you have to take them. Yeah. OK, nice. Right. The eagles have razor-sharp beaks and powerful talons. Taking them out of their boxes is going to be tricky. The Ark staff are experts in all sorts of animal welfare. They sometimes attend animal-related incidents around the airport. They've received a phone call about an animal in distress in a field at the end of the main Heathrow runway. A team is on its way. Vet Mike, animal health inspector Debs, and horse enthusiast Lisa. We have been told that there is a donkey um, okay. well, that looks like possibly could be dead, or it could be it's rolled against the fence and it's got caught, a, caught against the fence. So we don't know any more than that. So we're going down there, we've got the vet with us, and we're going to check to see if it's actually that or it's had a roll and it's got itself caught. Lisa has been at the Ark for 20 years. Horses have always been a passion of hers. Years ago, we got the call out. There was a horse that got um, loose um, round the back of us. And um, when I went out there, the horse was flat on the floor and he'd been on the floor such a long time. Just gave up. He was just didn't have the oomph to get him back up again. It was pretty sad. That That's the worst thing recently, anyway. So, what was the. We'll see. 
we'll see. It might be just a happy donkey that fell asleep on the side, hopefully. It's just here, on the right. There. It's immediately obvious which one's in trouble. As the team approaches, the animal struggles to its feet. And it's not a donkey, it's a young foal in a terrible condition. It's not well, and if we if I stop it moving, it's just gonna go down. And if it goes down, then it won't get back up again, and it's not a good thing. I wanna keep it moving to keep it warm, because it's been lying down so long, it's cold. Walking around helps to circulate a horse's blood. Lying down for long periods puts pressure on their lungs and internal organs. If I stop this, his head's going to go down, he's just going to get on the floor again. So I'm trying to get both of them to move. Come on, baby. Lisa and vet Mike rub the foal with hay in an attempt to dry it off. It'll help stimulate the skin and the blood flow and that'll warm it up, dry it up a little bit. And it's uh, just trying to get it to sort of start fighting really rather than just otherwise it's just going to sit down and give up. Like this. That's a bit more energy. But definitely, you know, as he's walking around, he's generating some body heat and, and, and he'll start to recover a bit better. And they are hardy, but probably being a late foal, it's not as big as you would want it at this time of year. Uh, it's still looking to mum to suckle, but she's not having any of it. The team wants to take the foal out of the field and get it to a stable where it can be properly cared for. But to take the horse away, they need to track down the owner. Stuart's about to take the first eagle out of its box. African black eagles are so powerful, they've been known to take on baboons. Stuart's relying on his years of experience to keep him safe. legs are the strongest part of a bird of prey. There's a lot of muscle there, so it doesn't do them any harm by grabbing their legs. Stuart knows all the tricks for subduing an eagle. If you lay them on the back, it's just a calming effect for them, because when they're youngsters in the nest, if they feel threatened, they'll lay on the back. And just telling you, if you put them here, they're pretty good. You wouldn't want to be had by these talons, would you? Did a few damage on his mm. wings, which is normal, really, uh, being left to the aviary. It will bounce around off the wires and stuff like that. And no damages from the boxes, so obviously they've been quite settled in the boxes. And it has a V on its back. And you know, Vorax Eagle is a, the other word name for them. Right. Four black eagles checked. Now for the African hawk eagles. These are a bit more lively. Go, mate. Just hang on, hang on, let me put your wings in. Hawk eagles have a wingspan of up to two metres and are one of the most common eagles in Africa. It's panting a bit, it's probably a bit hot, a little bit stressed. <laughs> it's all action, good Nick. It's all going smoothly so far, but just when Stuart thinks he can let his guard down. Ooh.
He's not steady at all, is he, this one? Yeah. <sighs> when you work with animals, your reflexes have to be pretty good. Um, I don't think he got me. No. Oh, he did, a little bit. I'd rather have his beat than his talons, to be honest. If I got done by one of his talons, I'll never get him off. So, oh, it's just a little bit, just get a bit of talent out of this one. Stuart almost came away from his eagle encounter unscathed. But while the eagles await the next leg of their journey, Stuart is heading off to find the first aid kit. By the runway, the team are still trying to locate the owner of the sick foal so they can get it to a vet. Animal health inspector Debs has worked at Heathrow for 20 years and knows some of the horse owners nearby. We're in a field locally to us at Heathrow and we've got um, a, a filly foal that's gone down and he's sort of dying that needs attention and we just wondered whether or not he might know who owns these horses. Because we've just tried everybody and we can't, we can't seem to find the owner. It's moving around, so I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. I, I just don't know how it's feeling right now. But it's all like, like it's, oh, he's gone down. It's on a drier patch, but you're not rolling. No. Debs and Vet Mike are calling every horse owner they know, trying to find any information. I know it's not yours, no. I just wonder whether you can give, you know, with any other numbers you've got and give them a ring and say, look, they need to do something now. If no one comes to it, it will die, most definitely. What you would have hoped is they would have already called a vet and somebody would be on its way. Because um, I think it's not. It's not unrecoverable at the moment if it had the right treatment. But it needs fluids, some treatment, some warmth. Here in the field, all the team can do for the foal is give it water. To do any more, they need to find the owner. No, I think uh, it probably needs. I would guess at the moment. It'd be lucky if it makes it to afternoon, and certainly, and, and by tonight, I'm sure it will be dead. I just get so frustrated that <laughs> people kind of keep horses and just keep them in the field, and as long as they've got hay and water, that's that's fine. It's just sad. I mean, look at the state of them. Don't die on them. If the team can't find the owner they may have no choice but to leave the foal to its fate. It's a cold day at the Ark. Animal health officers Lloyd and Sean are joining forces to tackle two jobs at two terminals. Sean is off to Terminal 5 to check an assistance dog and Lloyd is heading to an arriving Emirates flight at Terminal 4. And it's snowing, yeah. So, really, really pleasant. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get him in from the cold as quickly as possible. And this is Sean Stop. Yeah, boy. Thank okay, you very much, Lloyd. Bye. Bye. The Emirates flight was due to arrive 10 minutes ago, so Lloyd's animals should be ready to pick up meaning he can get them into the van and head back to collect Sean just as she finishes. Hopefully, when I get there at this time, it was late anyways, um, but when I get there this time, it'll be um, not waiting for me, but just coming off the plane. Yeah, that's a hope. 20-year-old Lloyd joined the Ark two years ago. With planes landing every 90 seconds, he's used to dealing with sudden changes in the arrival schedule. Lloyd is supposed to be collecting the animals from an Emirates flight due in from Dubai. But when he gets to the stand, the plane is nowhere to be seen. After all of that, kind of hoping that the plane would be down and pretty much unloaded, and kind of being a bit quick to come here, uh, because I didn't want the animals to freeze, and the plane's not here. <laughs> so it's late. So I might just give Sean a text and tell her it's late, so if her plane's early and she finishes, she's not going to be expecting us back in, like, Five minutes. 
Lloyd checked the arrivals information before he left. The plane should be here. There is absolutely nothing I can do about a plane being late. Like, lateness on the air airport is usually, at most, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. But this is now half an hour over its estimated time of arrival. It, it should be down. And, I don't know, maybe... Maybe he's gone to the wrong stand or... Or... I don't know. It, 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 it does happen, though. There are some airlines that fly in regularly but get stuck because they don't know where the stands are. Um, maybe it's just the pilot that doesn't know he throw properly. Or he'll turn the wrong way and then obviously planes don't have reverse gear. <laughs> so they have to get a tug on and tug it somewhere else. Um, but I doubt, I really doubt that's happened because there's only a certain amount of stands on the airport that can actually cope with the, um, that big aircraft because they need three jetties to um, unload the amount of people that were on the planes. In the shadow of the runway, the ARC team have managed to track down the owner of the sick foal. He's been unable to check on his animals because of his own ill health. I've only just come out of hospital and I ain't allowed to drive for a month. Apparently he's had a bypass recently and maybe his lads aren't coming up or something. The owner's determined to get the foal into the warm and nurse it back to health. So I'm just going to take him back when the vet comes and gives him injections and that in the, in the horse box and look after him, you know what I mean? Back at my place, I can keep set up all night with him, you know what I mean? Um, he's been very receptive to getting some help for the, for the foal. Um, he's obviously, um, you know, his foal is very important to him, which is good. Um, and I've put him in touch with a horse vet um, who has agreed to come out and look at the foal and give some treatment, hopefully. So, um, yeah, it's all good news. Once I get him home, I'll keep the boys and rub him and do him and give him a nice hot drink and everything. That's what he needs. And he wants a pot of liquid paraffin. Nick. If we hadn't come out, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the foal would have been dead today. The horse will be taken to a stable where it can get veterinary care through the night. Back at Terminal 4, Lloyd's plane has finally touched down. I've been to a plane that's so late, it's like, well, more than 40 minutes late. It'll probably be an hour late by the time I actually get some stand. And things are about to get worse for Sean. Easy now. Lloyd has more animals to collect. Sean's gonna love me, isn't she? Yeah. Got another pickup, which means I'm not gonna go get Sean until well, until I get this, and then go and get some inverts off of um, an LX332, which is a Swiss Air flight. Sean's in the cold at Terminal Five, and she's not happy. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh... Five seconds. What's up? We've got five first class planes to come off. OK. And then I've told him to get that off before any other baggage. Yeah, cool, that's cool. All right. Yeah, so the, the EK was late, as in it only just got on stand five minutes ago. Um, and I've kind of got another pickup. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Lloyd's animals are now emerging from the cargo hold. Once the dogs and cats are safely in the van, Lloyd can hurry to his next collection, one step closer to rescuing Sean. This afternoon, Lisa is looking after a dog who's stopping over at Heathrow in transit from Bahrain to Denver, his new home. He was rescued by an American soldier after being attacked by children in the street. This puppy um, has come from Bahrain. Uh, there's a little story behind it. There was a couple, they were at home, they could hear this crying, puppy crying, looked outside and there was three puppies and they were getting stoned by the locals. So they went downstairs and grabbed all three puppies and rescued them. So this is one of the three of them. Two of the rescued dogs have already travelled on to their new home in America. But there wasn't enough room for Bentley on the flight with the rest of the family. Hi, Popsicle! Right, here we have Bentley. It's a bit of a wicker. Shh, 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 shh. 
Calm down. Calm down. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. There's nothing wrong with him. I mean, he's not scabby or... He's just a lovely puppy. It's just like... There's nothing wrong with him at all. I mean, how could anyone... Even if you don't like animals, hurt something so precious, look at it. See? Lisa's received an email from the family asking for news on how Bentley's getting on. So she's going to send them some photos. You're so gorgeous. Yes, and I need to have some pictures taken with you. It's quite easy. Just press that one there. Right. OK. And it'll take a picture like that. OK. Lisa can now send the photos to the family, and Bentley's nearly ready to start the final leg of his journey to join them. His onward flight to Denver leaves in two hours. Lloyd is approaching Terminal 2 for his final collection before he can return to Shan, who's been abandoned for a very long time. It's coming on close to an hour ago um, that we dropped her off. Um, but the Swiss air flight is also nowhere to be seen. It should be here. <laughs> it should be here. You are joking me. So I'm just getting annoyed now. Hello, where are you? Finally, it pulls into view. I know it's only going to be like one box. That's more annoying than anything because it's late and Sean's still at Terminal 5. What really gets me is I'm in a rush and these lot are walking around like I've got nothing to do. As soon as the plane's engines have shut down, Lloyd can approach. Hurry, box! It's three. It's not one box of invertebrates, but three. Lloyd must move the van. I didn't get told how many, so I thought it was going to be a little box. It's not. Mm -hmm. Got insects. insects. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to go get shot. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Dogs, cats, and now invertebrates collected. Finally, Lloyd can pick up Sean. I am so annoyed that how long it took when it really just shouldn't have done. And uh, I'm also kind of feel guilty because it was my idea to take one van. <laughs> I'm sorry. It really is a pain. Sean is now in the warm, and the animals are on their way to the ark. But it could take some time for Lloyd to be forgiven. Let me in the cold for inverts, I'm Lloyd. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lisa said her reluctant goodbyes to Bentley the puppy. Goodbye. No, I know. Who now has a new home in Denver, Colorado. The young foal was kept in a stable for a week. Against the odds, it made a full recovery. And inside those boxes that Lloyd made Sean wait for were 500 beetles and scorpions. <laughs> <laughs>